Hey guys, I want to welcome you to the Blue Artist Livecast. I'm Pierre, this is Brittany, and this is Deontay. And, uh, okay, so this is a really interesting livecast. On, on this livecast, we have a, it's like a four-person show. We've got a very special guest. If you're watching right now, you can actually see him, probably, because of the uh, sound that's coming through his microphone. And that is Mr. Benjamin Black. Graphic designer extraordinaire out in California, very good friend of mine, very good friend of uh, me and Brittany, um, and just a wonderful, wonderful colleague. So he's on the show today, but I'm going to introduce you in just a second. Before I do that, I want to tell you a little bit about uh, what we're going to be talking about today. So on this live cast, we're going to be talking about um, taking the next step, okay, and why that is very, very important, okay. So. Uh, there's been some interesting transitions happening at Blue Artists, and um, and one of those transitions has been our evolution from where we were to where we are going. And yes, yes. So 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 that's. What we're talking about. But we're just talking in general. You know, business in general, life in general learning when it's time to take that next step and then actually doing it when the time comes. Before we do that, I want to um, introduce Mr. Deontay. Uh, Deontay was actually on a previous live cast a few episodes back. I spoke with him about um, social media and filmmaking, I believe, right? Yeah. And uh, that was a really big hit. We got a, a, really, a bunch of really cool emails from some people talking about how social media I need to get up with the times. So. There, okay? I'm doing the live cast. I'm over the times now, okay? So anyway, without further ado, I would like to introduce everyone to Benjamin Black. Ben, say hi. <laughs> hi. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, and good night, depending on where you're listening to this. <laughs> That's right, because we're an international live cast. So, <laughs> okay, so uh, Ben, um, <laughs> I'm going to introduce everyone just a little bit more about sort of who you are and what you do. Um, okay. What just happened? Uh, what was that? Okay, hold on. We're having a little bit of a technical issue. There we go. Okay, we're back. So, okay. So, so folks, this is, this, is, this is how we do, you know? We just kind of figure it out and make it work. So Ben is a graphic designer. He is also an illustrator, a web designer. Um, he is a comic book artist. He is a poet. Um, he is a uh, singer. Maybe he's not a singer. Uh, uh. Probably not a singer. No, but um, <laughs> <laughs> he was, he's a model. Ben was a model, actually, on, I believe, in a, a couple ads, print ads, something like that. And I've actually worked with Ben. Uh, uh, he blessed me by being in a few of my films. Um, and he, <laughs> good looks to help make my films look better. So Ben is just a fantastic guy. Uh, so Ben, could you could you tell us, you know, what have you been up to these days? What's keeping you busy? Uh, well, pretty much. Um, well, there's a market out there for illustration. I'll be in a small market. And these days, everybody kind of wants, uh, kind of wants you to know a lot of things even though you're working on maybe one particular aspect. So the more stuff you know, the more attractive you are. That's kind of where I'm going right now is learning as much as I can right now. And I also have jobs to keep me on top of my game in the process. And I just finished, uh, well, right now I'm working on a logo for one, one company. I'm uh, working on another illustration contract right now. Uh, just finished doing... Uh, a couple of publications. One was for um, LA-based writers and um, artists coming together. Another one was for actual gaming magazine group. Um, it's just one of the wow. student organizations that were in the art institutes nearby. And uh, that was pretty fun. It was pretty fun. And all those things involved lots of different aspects of graphic design, lots of different aspects of illustration, and also writing and um, communication, which is kind of another area I like to dabble in from time to time, which is uh, spoken word, poetry, stuff like that. But, um, you know, ultimately, I'm just growing, I'm learning, and uh, that's kind of like, keeping me busy in the process, I guess, with everything else in the world. Very cool. I kind of yeah, I kind of left those things out about being a poet and also 
uh, being a spoken word artist. So that's pretty oh. cool. I told I, I knew that you did that, but I I forgot to. There's just so many it. things that Ben does. It's hard to. Uh, oh, you're funny. Yeah. Uh, I'm just I'm a, I like to I say that you should just um, put all you can into your work because all the every area affects the other. Uh, my my poetry and my writing also affects my illustration to a large degree. And my illustration affects a lot of my design aesthetic, where it's just seeing things and visual imagery, and uh, that all kind of bleeds into a lot of my performance with spoken word lots of times, or just uh, I mean everything everything about myself. You know, I just uh, finished some training doing um, sign construction and worked with like large print. And uh, that got me into the realm of thinking of uh, expanding my um, poems and my typography, typographic poetry that I use a lot into a more of a larger format using vinyl. Um, and it also got me into thinking more or less about constructing my words, like in uh, um, type of, uh, type, I think they call it typographic motion or motion typography. Now, Brittany, do you know what uh, he's talking about? Because you're talking Chinese to me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, I, mean, I, I understand the uh, concept of the art of typography, which I, I find very interesting myself. I don't really dabble in it. Oh, that's right. I like it. I like it on, on the walls and uh, <laughs> on such exhibitions. But um, uh, one of my favorites being, um, I think the word was, uh, I think it was the word typography, but it was organized in a way that it shaped a woman's face with her mouth open. Kind yeah. of cool. So like yeah. Words, actually, yeah. The image itself is a really yeah. kind of the idea of like typography as an art style, but uh, yeah. On a on a basic level, typography is just the art of words. I think is that right, Ben? Uh, I want to say yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, I guess you could you could uh, translate it as words in general, but normally physical print words and like manipulating them. That's true. Yeah, a physical, lot. not like spoken. Yeah. like like font. Well, I mean, it's arguable because I've seen spoken word poets when they write down their poems, they're like manipulating the words and the type and, you know, the shape and the current and the font. So, I mean, I, I guess it all kind of bleeds into it. Okay, so we're going to stop talking uh, some other language that us <laughs> filmmakers over here don't don't. Is this uh, not a register. last cast about graphic design? So, <laughs> no, we're not, no, we're not talking about graphic design. We're, we're, we talk, we're, this podcast is about taking the next step. That we're taking, we're expanding okay. minds. Yeah, we expanding. are. That that is true. Yeah. Um. Okay. So <laughs> my head is expanding. We need. What we need to do is stop that process and start constructing it back. Yeah. So um, Ben, let, let's talk about some of the projects we've recently worked on. I know it's probably recent for us. It's probably been a couple of years. But um, I know that uh, one one that instantly comes to mind is um. Uh, uh, you were a big, big part of the uh, rebranding process for Blue Artists several years ago when we transitioned from the, the sort of paint stroke Logo. logos design yeah. to... Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. Paint yeah, stroke yeah. Logo. yeah. yeah. <laughs> ben, ben put together a whole um, brand manual. manual. For, for yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I want you to know if, if you are out there and if you need a logo for your business or a logo for your pretty much business, uh, ben, <laughs> ben is, I mean, if you look at our stuff and you see the design of the logo and just all the, the logic that goes into it and the brain power, that, you know, Ben was the driving force behind that. And um, and, and so, you know, we, we vouch for him. So. Uh, so that was something that we recently did together. Um, wow. I know that you you had a cameo in Greener by the Day, uh, at the very very end. I don't know if you if you caught that, but at the very end, he's one of the two guys that goes after the doctor. Oh, uh, yeah, oh. yeah. They meet him at the coffee shop or something and go after him. He's one of those two. Oh guys. yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a cameo. Oh <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, uh, but yeah. Has there been anything else like recently that we've done? I mean, I we've both been so busy. I, but. Oh yeah, well, no. Recently, I think uh, we worked with Ben to uh, to help uh, with a project with um, a book author. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Okay, so illustration work for. Uh, for oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, see, I was trying to play on that, but I mean, that's an ongoing project, so we can't really talk too much about that. But basically, right. uh, it's a book and. Uh, ben has been contracted to do the illustration for that book, and so very, very exciting. Um, 
but uh, one of the things that I, I've always loved about Ben was your your comics. Yeah. Your your cartoons. Your, oh, your thank cartoon you. Scripts. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The humor thank in there is just amazing. It's just it's. I, you know, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you can think of something and then write it and then draw it out and it becomes a thing that makes sense and is funny. It's <laughs> amazing to me. I have to work, as filmmakers, we have to work with actual <laughs> people to convey our messages. A but, lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people. And then our message sometimes gets diluted. Mm -hmm. But you can just commit pen to paper and draw an awesome uh, comic, cartoon, and, 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 and it's funny and it translates. So that's awesome. Okay. So, wow. uh, we got to keep this thing mo keep this thing moving because we are live, and I know people are uh, uh, watching. And I'm not able to actually see the Twitter because I'm so far away from the computer. But um, yeah. uh, what what we do want to talk about specifically is a, is taking that next step, taking that next step in your career and in your life. And I think we've all sort of been there at times where like there we're at sort of the precipice of. Mm -hmm. um, of what it is that we want to do, or we're at sort of the precipice of life in its current stage, and we right. see the next level, but we're hesitant to move in that direction because it seems like it's going to be so much work, mm. or it seems like it's not going to work out in our favor, you know? Well, sometimes um, you don't know how to bridge the gap between where you are currently and where you'd like to go next. So, so you see it, but there's like a big, like, chasm or chasm. <laughs> Between you and there, and you don't know how do I overcome this. It's yeah. like the Raiders of the Lost Ark when uh, Indiana had to step into the cavern. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so actually, that is a really good analogy. I love the Indiana. I'm sorry, I have to get in there. So, how about you, like, have you have you been in that situation, or are you in that situation now? You know, where you're like at that point where okay, I see the next level. And I feel that that's where I want to go, but I don't, you know, there's something in between you and there. Oh, man. Wow. Uh, well, honestly, I, uh, I believe that it's something that we're always kind of going through. Um, I mean, I, I joke and kid around, but I, I think to a certain extent that life is kind of uh, a smaller symbol for a constant death and rebirth that you're always going through, whether it's, when you wake up in the morning and you start your day, you're trying to make your day different from the day before. You're constantly, constantly on the transition. And uh, it just depends on what you want your focus to be on more that kind of brings that out. I know for me, um, there's been a number of pivotal points. Well, ones that I consider pivotal. I'm sure if you ask my friends or family, they probably would tell you something that would make me outside of what I'm thinking. So it just shows you different perspectives. But um, I mean, uh, I mean, recently it's been me um, kind of broadening my focus a lot more to expand my skills. Um, I know there's a lot of different skills and uh, talents that you can pick up, and you never know how those might influence other areas, uh, like your art, or maybe even if you're dealing with a problem at home or something like that. You never know how it how it affects your mind, and I think part of Daily change is dealing with different catalysts for change, different things to help you move through it. Sometimes you never know if a hobby might be that thing that helps you out. So uh, I think it kind of all bleeds in together a little bit where it's um, maybe the thing that's causing the change is also the thing that's helping you move through it. You know, uh, mm -hmm. it's, I guess, also runs out to my larger philosophy as I am with myself, as I am with art. Uh, and I try to use a lot of the pivotal changes um, in a lot of my poetry, in a lot of my, my spoken word, in a lot of my dialogue to the public. Um, lots of times, those are the most uh, deepest experience where if you're an artist, whether it's film or writing or video, you're using that pivotal, that energy you get from that moment to help you flourish with this really good art. Um, there's this book I'm reading right now called Art and Fear that's really really good uh, that was given to me a little while ago and it's helped me actually discover how um, fear is also kind of a power you can use to help you move through certain events that you might be scared of. Uh, I think they call it tropophobia. Tropophobia is the phobia change and that's something that's like on a large 
Is that yeah. Phobia? What's, so, what's the, uh, the name of that book in the artist fan for those uh, watching today? Oh, uh, yeah. The name of the book is Art and Fear. Um, Observations on the Perils and Rewards of Art Making. It's uh, written and edited by David Fields and Ted Erling. It's a really good book. That cover, man, in front of your camera. Uh, yeah, spoil, definitely, definitely. Um, here, I'll put this yeah. up. Here, like, so, like, so. Uh, I don't know. It might come out backwards, but. Uh, yeah. We see Thanks. it. Thanks. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a really major. It's kind of opened my eyes up a little bit more about just um understanding my own weaknesses and what might be learning behind you know when you have a uh, when you have a writer's block or you have an artist block I, I think we'll call it because we you we all know that when you're dealing with different um, whether it's occupation transition from like occupation to another or within art where because what you're producing is a part of your identity as you change it changes also mm. um you're always dealing with kind of like that uh that fear pretty much of the unknown of what's going to happen next. And it, last time it'll create a writer's block or it'll just, it'll create that block in your head where you can't move to producing something else. And um, lots of times we don't know that that's actually a, a strength that we can use to help ourselves out also with going through this. So, so talk to me about um, sort of following the clues that life gives you that you need to make a change, you know, like, okay, there are certain clues that happen in your life that, you know, and they might be different for every person, but there are clues nonetheless that you sort of notice and you can go, wait a second, I, yeah. is this a clue for my destiny or is this something that I should move towards or away from? Um, you know, how do, we, how do we notice those clues and then how do we act on them? Uh, it's funny you mentioned that. That's, yeah, that's true. Uh, it's something that's definitely sort of relative um, because you can't necessarily describe it in general, but for each person, uh, they each have their own, I think, clue, you want to call it. Like for me, it's, uh, I say if um, I'm trying to do, I say I'm trying to do three things at the same time. I'm trying to um, do my poetry. I'm trying to do my um, illustration. Um, my career is a little, a little bit different, and then my graphic design career is a little bit different. But also, um, I'm trying to do all three, and for some reason, I say for me personally, if I'm having a hard time uh, progressing with my work in each of those areas because I'm trying to do them all simultaneously, or maybe I have these goals I'm shooting for simultaneously, it might be because I'm trying to do too many at too much at the same time. There might be clues here and there that maybe I should focus on one more so than the other. Uh, lots of times it could be something having to do with convenience where we have an opportunity for, uh, let's say, an a interview or a contract or something like that. And in one place, yet you've been um, doing this, playing around with this other side. Lots of times you might just sort of want to branch out and do something else completely outside of what you're thinking about. And kind of, uh, it all kind of conflicts with each other after a while. Um, sometimes the clue could have been just maybe taking that initial job offer where you had the chance and trusting that focusing on that might actually lead you somewhere. Um, I mean, I've had, I mean, I, artists, I, one thing I think is artists also rely on certain divine intervention um, for different situations as well. And when lots of times that, that spark of genius or that dialogue with the cosmos might actually be a hint that you should do something outside of your artwork, maybe that might influence it as well. Um, I know I've gotten into a lot of situations like that. Um, that's normally, that's normally when I've had a lot of my writer's block also is I'm going through this change, this transition mm -hmm. and I'm dealing with this I don't know, I guess this writer's block. And uh, yeah, it's a lot, of, a lot of conflict, I think, would kind of get my mind 
freaking out where I would try to run out for answers. I couldn't figure out where, but the clues were right in front of me. So, so, so um, I think we're all going to sort of take a stab at that, but I'd like to hear from you, Keontae. How do you, you know, have you, in, you're, you're in film school right now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, almost done, right? And so, and you're all, you've also made several short films, and now you're working on a feature. So you're kind of at that point where you're taking things to that next level. So what are the clues that, you know, you don't have to tell us all of them, but what are maybe one or two of the clues that you've experienced and, you know, what led you, what led you to be able to say, I'm going to take the risk and try to do my dream, you know, of, of making a feature film? Mm -hmm. uh, well, once, once I, I got the practice of making a whole lot of short films, I thought I was ready, but I didn't know if I could truly get my message across. And then once mm -hmm. random people that I didn't know started seeing my work and telling me that they love it, that's when I knew that I I was a filmmaker and I knew I could make a longer movie than ten minutes. You know, I could I could do, you know, an hour and a half long movie and get my message across and still keep my artistic integrity. So that was a clue. That was a clue. Yeah, that, hearing that feedback from other people. Yeah, hearing the feedback from people that I don't. Because, of course, you know, people you know are going to tell you that they love your work, whether they hate it or love it. They, you know, sometimes it's hard to get honest reactions from people that you know and that care about you and that you mm -hmm. care about because, you know, they don't want to hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. So when people that you don't know or that you don't talk to that much come out and tell you that your art is good or whatever you're doing is good and keep going towards it, keep working towards it, that's when you that's when I, at least for me, I realized that it's really that time for me to take the next step. You know, and then of course being around you guys really inspired me on to take the next step. Just seeing how you work and you know picking up mentally picking up off of you guys and seeing the process of writing to post production. You know, just picking up cues from you guys really inspired me. To say, hey, I have this movie, I have it written. Why not do it? Why not do it? Yeah. And it's just like the Indiana Jones thing. Well, why yeah. not take the step up? Why not take the leap of faith? You never know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, you could fall flat on your face, or it could be the next big thing. You know, you never know until you actually try. Until you actually try. There's a uh, a quote by an artist. I think his name is uh, Derek uh, Audet. And uh, what he says is, um, no matter how substandard you feel your skill or talent may be, um, if you don't put your work out there, the world will always remain deprived of it. Mm -hmm. but I guess uh, the thing behind yeah. that I really like is that, uh, you know, you, you get to that point where, you know, of course, you know, you're like, well, this is my stuff, I'm kind of shy about it, or it's not good enough. And finally, you know, you get to a point where you realize, well, I just want to get it out there because, like Beyonce said, you don't know. You don't know who it's going to impact, whose life it's going to change, uh, who's going to get it. And you know, even if it's uh, this one person that really understands what you've just done, you get one true fan from putting your stuff out there, um, the world is that much more enriched for that person. So I agree. I think if you if you can impact the life of one person, you, I think some people want to, you know, initially just change everybody's life. If you if you can affect somebody, one person with what you do, I think you're doing the right thing. You know, it doesn't always have to be a million people to love your art or to love your poetry or whatever you're doing. If you can just affect one person, that means that you're doing it right. How about you, Ben? Uh, how do you feel about that? Well, well I, I think it's true. I, I highly agree with that. Um, from what I've seen, I remember when I was younger, I had dreams of trying to change the entire world, you know, by uh, like Martin Luther King or Gandhi. <laughs> but those very people started out with just one person at a time. And if they didn't have the inclination, they would catch fire or be to such a large degree, but they stayed focused on their goal and that ended up being the outcome. They followed the clues and they trusted their intuition that they could make the right choices. And that ended up being the outcome of the results. You know, they never predicted that. I think that's helpful in a smaller scale for all of us. And that's really cool. So we're kind of um, 
you know, inching in that direction with new artists. Yeah. Uh, as a team, uh, for for a long time, we've we've had a particular focus with, when it, with basically on film and video. Right. And that was what we what we did. And uh, over time, we we were we were getting um, uh, requests from different clients to do other types of things that we really felt didn't really weren't part of what we set out to do. And so those might be like print design, um, web design, um, design of anything basically, uh, other types of pro film projects like commercials or, I remember at a point there was even, much, before we did our first music video, we were even like, we don't do music videos because they're not yep. films. Yep. Um, yeah. <laughs> you so, remember those guys. Yeah. Yep. yeah, I remember. So, so <laughs> yep. Um, but now we're, we've sort of been inundated with these opportunities and not just from the side of requests, but from the sides of uh, the fact that our community of artists and um, collaborators has been expanding and it's been growing um, to the point where, you know, we have a ton of people that follow us on Twitter regularly. We've made so many fantastic contacts through social media. Mm -hmm. Um, when we have castings for projects, I mean, we get so many actors that we don't know what to do with. Um, uh, and, and each time we have a, a, a film project and everyone's on the set, I mean, it's just an incredible experience because it's that sense of community. So, community's been a real big deal. Yeah. And um, <laughs> now we're sort of taking the steps to sort of, Say, well, how can we create a system that is beneficial for all the members of that community right. instead of just being beneficial for the producers, which is what we were for a really long time. And so to do that, we started throwing around the ideas of, well, how can we be a more community-focused business? And somebody threw the idea out there of being an agency, of actually transforming blue artists, or more like evolving blue artists from a... Uh, from a producing firm to a creative agency. Yeah. Now, Ben, we've talked about this a couple times in the past, and and it's and it's happening now. And you've sort of been a part of that process. So, could you tell us from your perspective? And again, this is for people that are listening. Um, you know, what kinds of advantages does blue artists evolving into a creative in, a creative agency have for artists like you? Me personally, it's awesome. Uh, as you know, I do. I'm, a, I'm an artist, multiple talents. I'm a graphic designer, I'm an illustrator, I write a lot. Uh, Blue Artist has opened up a lot more doors uh, than per se just one specific category, let's say, like just writing. There's a lot of different um, things that they can do also with my illustration. For instance, uh, they're open to publishing um, Blue Picture picture books or, or journals or things like that if you post things like that it's uh, that's that would be awesome i mean that's another gateway which leads into other things and so it's kind of like um uh, i don't know how else to put it but it's kind of like a, a ladder on stairs it just opens up more doors and leads to one after a while i think um it's just kind of like growing more arms the more arms you have the more things you can do the more changes you can make <laughs> more stuff you can clean up. It's <laughs> very good, actually. It's a great, it's yeah. a great analogy. So, uh, Brittany, uh, as the uh, design producer, well, I guess I don't know if that would be the design design lead. Yeah, it's funny. We've been for <laughs> I think since the inception of Blue Artist, trying to figure out what the heck I'm supposed to be called. Um, we've gone through producer slash designer, lead designer, and this or that. And the other yeah. Well, and the reality is that yeah. even though you do a lot of our sort of homegrown design work. Mm -hmm. Um, we we do work with a team of designers that that uh, that can vary depending on the project. Yeah. Um, so so there there is sort of that larger arm of designers that you sort of represent. You know? And so how do you like how this shift from being just a producing firm to a creative agency? Like what? How how, how does that make things better from your perspective? Oh well, yeah, number one thing immediately is uh, more friends. <laughs> More design that understand what I'm talking about when I tell my wonderful director. It doesn't make sense. We can't do that in the time allocated. <laughs> no, but um, you know, having having more people to bounce ideas off that that understand the process of design or 
you know, trying to get a logo to look right or topography, you know, the kerning and the, and the, uh, what's the other thing like that? Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> so the kerning don't, don't, don't ask me. Yeah. yeah, don't ask me. Tracking, the tracking, <laughs> tracking, the letting, all that stuff. The font going, you know, this way or, or this yeah. way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Having someone to help you with, you know, what colors, in, you know, invoke this emotion, or you know, how would this particular artist best be represented based on? No. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're right over there, man. It's okay. Yeah, I just thought I saw something. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but um, definitely um, not to be long-winded, but um, yeah, the the immediate advantage is just having more artists involved, uh, having more people to help you accomplish great things, and uh, really brainstorm with you. You, know, you can do the best you can to come up with your own ideas as a designer, but uh, sometimes the best ones are outside of your head. You get it, you get it from other people. You know, other people collaborating together make this big mega idea that no one could have found on their own. And uh, that's really what I'm excited about. I mean, just just in the transition alone, we talked to so many people, you know, Ben and, and Makima and some others, you know. Um, other artists were really excited about the idea of blue artists being a community and being a creative agency. And so uh, it looks like it's definitely going to benefit us, and it's already a great idea, seemingly to other people who have been, you know, involved with us for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now we can actually include them in a more sort of business mm -hmm. environment, you know, get them more involved, and, and they can mm -hmm. benefit from it, and we benefit from it, and the mm -hmm. clients benefit from it. So mm -hmm. I think it's great all around. I, I don't have any uh, downsides. Or... How about you, Deontay? Um, one question. <laughs> uh, so we're 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 talking about uh, sort of evolving the yeah. okay. uh, producer to the creative agency. Yeah. 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 Well, I think it, it it gives the team more opportunities to work with creative people yeah. instead of just staying within ourselves. Uh, we get to expand and, and really, you know, like the work for hire thing. We get to people see that and. You know, you don't know who could be in the the, the place that we're shooting. Mm -hmm. We could run into another filmmaker who wants to know more about the company, and then we could bring them onto the team. And they, you know, have crazy, amazing ideas that would set the company off. You know, mm -hmm. and so I think it it really expands the brand. It makes it makes everything bigger and better mm -hmm. for what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that is probably what it's all about, exactly. right? Like at the end of the day. So okay, so Ben, uh, now you're in California, so we're sort of national, I guess, if you want to look at it that way. We've got team members all over the country. Uh, so um, you know, you're, do you have a you, do you don't have a manager or an agent at the moment, right? Uh. No, not really. Um, I know I'm um, with uh, the change Blue Artist is going through, though. I could uh, use that. It's a, a lot more helpful than a temporary staffing agency and someone that's kind of close to person that can help you out with your, your, mm -hmm. how you sell yourself, how you attract clients, money. I mean, uh, if Blue Artist did that, that'd be another big step forward. And so, you know, you, you don't. We don't know what's uh, technically in store, but that could be one of our goals. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what's important, right? Being open to those possibilities and saying right. whatever clues come in. But definitely artist management and, <laughs> and representing talented people like you two and like you, Ben, you know, like making sure that the community focus is sort of a win-win for everybody who's part of the organization. And so I can tell you from my perspective, it's been a really scary thing because the only thing I'm good at is video. So like all this other stuff is not, you know, it's kind of like, well, I don't, you know, I've always been apprehensive about it, but um, everyone is saying, you know, this is the natural, this is, these, you, this is where we need to go. So okay. So anyway, so we're we're, we're sort of uh, it's just exploring that, but definitely in the in the coming days and possibly weeks, or more like in the coming weeks or possibly days. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. There will be some new information about uh, blue artists and 
and this shift from producing firm to creative agency. If you go to our website right now at blue, uh, www.blue-artist.com, you're going to see a big fat renovation sign because the site is being renovated. Mm -hmm. They're the, the incredible designers at <laughs> are uh, really <laughs> working hard to um, to give the site uh, just give it a community focus, a community feel, so that and a facelift and a facelift. Yeah, I mean yeah. to really represent what it is that we're going to be standing for, you know, from that point forward. So anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, we've got we've got some messages on the iPad in the back there. <laughs> Um, uh, so anyway, Ben, it's, it's just been absolutely fantastic, uh, you know, catching up with you and sort of talking about life and talking about uh, taking things to that next level. So as we begin to wrap up, um, could you tell us, you know, uh, right now, like right now, if I were to say penny for your thoughts, you know, right this very moment, what, what is your next level? What is it that you're striving to at this point? I mean, again, now just... Ben is an, an accomplished graphic designer, illustrator, cartoonist, poet, spoken word artist. I mean, the guy has been around the block and back. And so uh, yeah, this is going to be really interesting to hear uh, how, you know, someone at his caliber, what is your next level at that stage? <laughs> wow, thanks a lot, Peter. I appreciate that. Um, all right, uh, right on the moment, I guess, if I had to pop something off straight from the top of my head, uh, I'm learning, uh, <laughs> I'm learning what, who I am, I guess, in a sense of there's a common theme, a common message, a common identity behind everything that you produce. It's the one thing that differentiates you from all the other artists around you. And it's the one thing that allows you to actually sell yourself, you know, or else you're worth to be just like everyone else. And really and truly, getting an audience, it's all about displaying that message, that identity, and showing it and getting the people who are attracted to you. And every time someone does that. So that's what I'm trying to find with myself. And it's, it's something that's within my writing, within my drawing, within the design work that I make for a client. Because even in that, the reason why they come to you is because of your, your touch, your personal touch that you can do to a certain extent. So uh, the more I can find out what that is and bring it out, per se, bring it out, help it mature, help it grow, uh, the better all around um, uh, is my progression. Because in a way, the, the main reason we create is to communicate. and. Um, and so the more you perfect the message, it also helps you out with how you're communicating. So, um, yeah, uh, I hope that was <laughs> too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes, makes sense to me. So, okay, um, I'm going to pose that same question to Deontay and to Brittany. We'll start with you, Deontay. What's your next level right now? My next level, uh, obviously, is making this feature film, mm -hmm. you know. I'm transitioning from short films to feature films, and that's where I want to be at this current moment. So, you know, this is the first of hopefully many feature films to come, mm -hmm. and hopefully each one will be more successful than the last. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I mean, what greater, what better ideal to strive for? Yeah, I think we can go ahead and go on that one. <laughs> no, 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 uh, you, have to, you have to chime in too. That was nice. Yeah. What's your next level, Miss? Mrs. Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my next level is definitely to uh, see Blue Artists successfully transition from producing firm to the creative agency. Um, and then also strive in that new field. Um, being able to help people and offer these new services and, and offer it frequently and, and well. Looking, looking forward to that when that day happens. And um, on a more personal note, uh, next level for me is uh, really taking my character animation skills to the next level. Um, really learning more about Maya on a daily basis and about um, really uh, ingesting the principles of animation and storytelling you know, through those characters. And uh, really becoming a better storyteller. So I guess in a nutshell would be 
next level for me is becoming a better storyteller. Mm. Right on, right on. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I mean, we're just surrounded by greatness. <laughs> So, all right, guys, that's, that's all for the Blue Artist Livecast uh, today. You've just been in the presence of some really incredible people. Again, I'll recap. We've got Deontay, uh, up-and-coming producer and filmmaker, uh, uh, short film extraordinaire, but now he's taking the, the leap into full-length feature filmmaking, and that is a difficult task. There's actually a filmmaker that says that, that that is the hardest thing known to uh, the human race is to make a full-length feature film. It is a good full-length feature film. Is the most difficult thing to do, period. OK, and then we've got uh, Brittany Design Lead at Blue Artist and Character Animation uh, Artist, wait, Character Animator? Animator. Uh, and, and, uh, and so her next level is improving on those skills, improving on uh, telling stories, and also uh, taking Blue Artist to that next level as a uh, creative agency. And so. We've got Ben all the way in California, uh, just fantastic graphic designer and illustrator, um, someone that I think we all really look up to and admire, and uh, are just, you know, it's, it's always a wonderful privilege to be able to work with you, Ben. And, and, and your next level, Ben's next level, is uh, to continue to find himself so that uh, the, more, the more he gets to know himself, the more truer his art will actually be. Am I saying that right? Yeah. The only way I can get to know myself is true. Oh, that out? Yeah, I don't, I don't true. think true is the way. Yeah. <laughs> well, either way, the only way to get to know it's myself true. is yeah. true. Yeah. Empty cup of water that needs to be good. Man. <laughs> Another. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was that line from Beowulf? Uh, I don't even imagine Beowulf. Door. <laughs> I am Beowulf. Wait, and let it be known that I do not like the movie. Okay, fan of the original book. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I have okay. to say, I'm old school like that. Okay, so there you go, guys. That's the Blue Artist Livecast. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you're catching this on YouTube, thank you very much. We had a bunch of uh, technical difficulties, and you know when you're trying to do something live and you've got everyone very busy, it's difficult to bring everybody together. So just bear with us. But if you like convenience and video isn't so much of a big deal and just want to hear what we've got to say, you can always uh, download the uh, Blue Artist Livecast straight from iTunes. Just go to iTunes, type in Blue Artist uh, Livecast or Blue Artist Live, or just Blue Artist, and you'll find us. We'll pop right up. And then just subscribe to our stream, subscribe to our uh, to our. Um, I guess, channel on iTunes, and you can uh, get the updates. We update them, uh, the channel, possibly twice a month, and you'll always get whatever's recent. Uh, but also on our Blue Artist YouTube channel, you can take advantage of all the great videos, all the great interviews, and you can see us live in color, and it's always fantastic. A um, couple things I want you to know. Uh, you're going to see some new stuff on, this, on the Blue Artist uh, YouTube site. Uh, we've got a new video series called Difference. This is this is uh, uh, what we're doing is we, we're we're uh, rebranding some of the past video projects that we've done that are that are focused on social justice. We're calling those difference now, and um, we're going to be taking a special focus in that area, and producing more short films and just sort of viral videos about social justice, um, different things that are happening around the world and in our community that. Uh, you know, we think we need, to start, we need to shed some light on it. And so those will be going up on YouTube uh, under this new um, uh, brand called Difference. Additionally, you can see all of our live casts right there on YouTube uh, and, and really take advantage of the, of the fantastic information and knowledge that we're getting from experts in the field like Courtney Hurst in public relations, uh, now Benjamin Black, graphic designer and illustrator. Uh, recently we had Michael Rikushi. Uh, uh, from Terra Rising Records, and and, uh, and we even had a social media uh, social media um, Wonder Woman by the name of Deborah Bellaray and her son Sam on the show just a few days ago. So anyway, we're just packing on with fantastic people, and uh, I hope you just stay stay tuned, stay engaged, and don't forget you can always tweet us at Blue Artists, find us on Facebook or send me an email at info at blue-artist.com. Again, guys, I want to thank you so much. We'll see you later. Bye. If you like what you see and you want to be a part of our ongoing conversation, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you haven't already, please visit our daily blog at www.blue-artist.com.